Hi, this is another one of my uh, videos and continuing series on Z80 Retro Computing. Uh, if you haven't watched the first video, I suggest you go back and watch that one. It's called Intro to Retro Computing. And it will give you the background on the, uh, the, the platform that I'm using and the boards that I'm designing to, uh, to go along with it and uh, where I ordered my original kit from, uh, stuff like that. So for this part of the project, what I wanted to do was to um, add a GPS functionality to the RC2014 so I could have a GPS synchronized uh, Nixie tube clock. You might recall I demonstrated a Nixie tube clock like in the first one of my video series or the second one, somewhere around then. Um, but I don't like having to set the clock, so I wanted to add the GPS feature. So to do that, we need to add a second serial port. So our RC2014, of course, has a Z80 CPU. And it comes with B50 um, serial port and then we can hook that up to our computer terminal. So what option we could just add a second 68B50 hook that up to our GPS receiver and then it can receive a signal from the satellite up in the sky and get our uh, automatic time fixes. So that was actually my first take on the project was to use two of these 68B50 uh, serial chips. Um, that seem to be very problematic. These things just weren't working reliably for me. I'm not entirely sure why, but I had lots of issues with uh, characters being dropped, um, it being sensitive to which slot in the uh, RC2014 backplane I put it in, uh, etc. So that was, uh, was kind of unfortunate, but I found a better solution. And the better solution is rather than using these two chips, We will use one big chip called the Z80SIO. There's various versions of the SIO, including the SIO1, the SIO2, and just plain SIO with no number. Uh, the pinouts do differ uh, occasionally from one variant to the other, so um, using any of my boards, make sure you get the right variant of the chip to go with them. Okay, so our laptop operates at 115-200 baud. When I first started uh, this SIO2 board, I did not even think to check that my GPS receiver operates at 9600 baud. So both the SIO2 and the uh, 68B50 that the RC2014 came with, they have some very rudimentary capabilities for dividing the clock ratio um, by either 1, 16, or 64. So it turns out that on the RC2014, this here was 7.3728 megahertz divide by 64 115 so it was very easy to get the 115 200 uh, clock for the serial port uh, but there is no easy place to get a 9600 baud clock so what we will do to resolve that is we will use something called the CTC So this CTC is a counter slash timer and it actually has four different ports 
I used uh, port one, call this out one, and then we can use this as the port B clock. And what we, we will end up doing is we will end up outputting 9600 times 16. And then up here we will do a uh, divide by 16 on that. I don't know exactly why I had to do the uh, divide by 16. My original take on this project was just to output uh, 9600 baud and then use divide by 1. That was not reliable. Outputting 9600 times 16 and then dividing 6 by 16. That did turn out to be reliable. And doing that, I'm able to talk to the GPS at 9600 baud on port B. Whereas up here on port A, we talk 115200 baud to the laptop. Okay, here's the schematic for the SIO board. Uh, it's very simple uh, schematic uh, because there's only, really only one chip that's uh, significantly important on it, and that's the SIO2 chip. It's a big 40 pin dip package. Uh, the only other chip on board is just the standard uh, address decoding logic, which if you've watched my other videos, I always use a 74HTT138N for those. And no exception here, we've got the 74HTT138N with a big double row header that lets you jumper any one of eight different addresses, uh, just like most of my other boards. So you'll notice this thing does uh, connect up just a little bit differently than some of the other generic peripherals we've used. For example, it has specific pins to connect M1 and IO request. Um, it supports some of the, the fancier Z80 features like the uh, interrupt handling, can generate interrupt vectors and call different uh, interrupt service routines. A little bit fancier, but from our perspective, it's very simple because we just hook M1 to uh, M1 on the back plane, um, IO request to IO request on the back plane. Uh, there is a clock pin which hooks up to the RC2014's clock. Down here are a couple of headers uh, that go out to serial ports. Um, these headers are set up so that you can, you can hook an FTDI cable up to them as is. Um, I don't really know the purpose of these resistors. I took them off of the, uh, the RC2014 uh, serial board schematic. I've also found them in uh, Grant Searle's schematic for his, uh, his CPM and uh, basic uh, Z80 projects. So. I'm not sure if they're just there to do some current limiting when going to the FTDI cable, but uh, I kept them in just for good measure. Um, I did have provision here for an onboard oscillator in case you didn't want to use the RC2014's default oscillator. Uh, really no reason to do that unless you are uh, decided to overclock the CPU or something. You could have a separate oscillator for driving the, uh, the clocks on the uh, SIO. Uh, there's a jumper here that lets you select how the uh, interrupt enable pin works. You can either jumper it to 5 volt or you can jumper it down here to the one of the extra pins on the RC2014 backplane. There's a couple jumpers over here that let you uh, jumper um, the transmit and receive clocks. So this first set of clocks goes with port A, the second set of clocks goes with port B. Uh, you could either jumper them to use the oscillator which could also be jumpered to the uh, back plane. Uh, do that in, in case that you wanted to use the default 115200 baud, or you could jumper it down here to one of the extra pins on the back plane, uh, which is what we'll do for the, uh, the one that we want to use with a uh, 9600 baud. So I think that's, that's really all there is um, to the SIO board. As I said, a pretty simple board. Let's look at the CTC board. The CTC board is also a very simple board, having one main chip, which is the CTC, 
Uh, we've got address decoding logic, just like uh, in all the other boards, the 74HCT138N. I used a, uh, a jumper here so you can alter the behavior of the address decoding logic a little bit. If you jumper it to 5 volt, it'll behave uh, just like all my other boards where these things are uh, 20 hex apart and will use up uh, 20 hex of address space. If you jumper it down here to A4, then it will, uh, it will offset uh, the address by 10 hex um, and only take up 10 hex space. And my thought here is that I will be able to uh, put the CTC and the SIO, locate them in the same uh, 20 hex uh, space, you know, from like a, put, put the uh, SIO at 80 hex and the CTC at 90 hex and uh, thus avoid uh, using up too much address space with them. Um, so it interfaces a lot like the SIO did and it has dedicated M1 IO request pins that go to the back plane. Uh, uses a clock, which also goes to the uh, back plane. Um, over here is where some of the counter timer logic is. Each of the four timers has a trigger input, uh, which is optional. You can either base your timing off of the system clock, or you can uh, set up a counter that works from these trigger inputs. Uh, the first three timers have outputs. Uh, the, the fourth timer can only uh, generate interrupts. Uh, but these first three, we can use the outputs to drive something like our SIO. I did uh, leave room on the board for a oscillator footprint if one should need it. Um, all of the boards that I put oscillator footprints on, I've so long, uh, I've never needed it, not even once. Um, but it's there in case you wanted to uh, to drive these uh, triggers from some different crystal than the uh, the the system clock. Uh, there's some headers, where are they, over here that let you hook these trigger inputs up to the clock, either to the uh, onboard oscillator pad or jumpered here down to system clock. So for example, you can take the system clock, feed it into trigger one, and you'll have a 7.3728 megahertz uh, clock going into that trigger pin, which is what we will end up doing for our baud rate generation. Uh, there's a four pin header here that, that comes off for the output pins to make it convenient to hook stuff up. And there's a jumper block down here that lets you hook up various uh, things to the extra pins on the RC2014 backplane. So my idea is that uh, the baud rate signal will go out from trigger output one and then it can go into these extra uh, pins where it can be picked up on the, uh, the SIO board and used as the baud rate uh, clock for port B. So let's look at the boards that I built. Uh, this first one is for the SIO. Uh, this is hopefully not the final form of this board because there were numerous uh, mistakes when I designed the uh, the original. They've since been uh, corrected in the schematic and the schematic that uh, that I showed earlier in this video does have the corrections in it but this is the original board. Uh, just some of the mistakes I made um, I didn't hook the interrupt enable up to the right uh, source, so I had to jump or interrupt enable over to 5 volt. I didn't provide uh, separate clocks, so I had to kind of cut a trace and then hack some stuff on the back. Um, just part of the learning process and designing boards. First one doesn't always come out right. Uh, the revision will look a lot like this, but with a few more jumpers uh, to do the clock settings and such. Um, anyway, on this you can see here's the 74HCT138 for address decoding, here's the SIO chip, uh, port A, port B, three resistors for each one. Um, this here is the uh, clock jumper and the footprint for the oscillator. Over here are some jumpers that you can use to jumper uh, 5 volt um, into uh, the 5 volt pin on these headers that would allow you to either uh, first, uh, power the entire RC2014 off of a FTDI adapter. Um, that might be kind of a stretch for my RC2014 because I have that uh, LED display board on the front that pulls a lot of current. So I don't tend to I tend to power my RC2014 from a separate supply. Uh, the other thing that you can use the five volt output is for running a peripheral. And when I demo this later and hook the GPS module up to it, we will see the the GPS module. It's powered from 5 volt on that header, and that's why that one there is jumpered. So the other board 
is the CTC board. Also a very simple board. Um, there's the CTC chip, there's the address decoder, various jumpers to select the address, unpopulated oscillator footprint, uh, jumper here that uh, connects this block over here to system clock, um, and then these are the uh, trigger channels for each one of the uh, the timer counter channels in the CTC. So I've set up a uh, trigger for channel one to hook up uh, via this jumper to system clock. So trigger, so channel one will be triggered at 7.3728 megahertz. Up here is the output. So there's a ground pin and then uh, output for uh, the first channel, second channel, and third channel. So this is the live demo part of the video. I've set up on my uh, screen uh, a video view of the RC2014 and a terminal window so we can look at the terminal. Um, back here is the SIO2 board. It's in the last slot. You can see it's got one cable coming off which is an FTDI cable. Uh, hooks up to my USB port. Uh, the other is a little pigtail hooked up to port B which runs this uh, UP501 GPS module. Um, in front of the SIO board is the CTC board, and there is a jumper here that is jumpering um, output one of the CTC into the clock inputs for port B of the SIO. So let's reset the RC2014. Uh, we will do a cold start. Uh, okay, so I have a program here which will just echo uh, characters that are received on the second serial port and print them to the console. It's this very short program here. And if we run it, we should, um, as expected, see that there's no output. The reason there's no output is because I set up the, uh, the basic ROM so that it defaults to 115,200 baud on uh, cold start and the GPS is running at 9600 so if we break this we set the baud on port 1 to 9 for 9600 then we run it again and we see GPS uh, sentences coming from the uh, GPS chip so I have also written another program uh, that will parse those GPS sentences and output the current time to the console. Uh, so let me paste that program into here. And we can run it. And there we see that it is receiving uh, times. Current time of 22.31.29. And it receives a new uh, GPS packet every second so we're getting an update on the time once a second that is pretty much it for this demo and at some point I am going to take this and I'm going to hook up the Nixie tubes to it and put it in a nice case and I will have uh, turned this into a uh, self-setting uh, Nixie tube clock Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sandrail stuff. Bye.